Thank you very much. So uh, the, the topic is just like you can see, and uh, this is the purpose that I would like to, 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 to show, I would like to tell about that. So I would like to present economic society in Krakow as a free market think tank that debated and, to a certain extent, reinterpreted the teachings of the Austrian School of Economics. And I will, of course, tell you uh, what kind of reinterpretation that was. And the main problem here is the words, certain extent. Because of some uh, well, general problems of construction of pre-war Polish economical debate, uh, this uh, extent wasn't very, very high. But still, it is quite important to say about that. And I will, of course, say some words about uh, economic society in Krakow as something that we can, uh, we can see as a, not only a group of economists, but also a group of students of civilization. There is a really important book uh, written by Erwin Decker, uh, he works at the University of Rotterdam and uh, he sees Austrian School of Economics as not only a group of economists but also a group of, and this is his words, students of civilization. And I will tell you uh, what it means and is it possible to see Krakow School of Economics also as that kind of group. So, uh, economic society in Krakow was created during the first general meeting on March, 1st March of 1921. And these are the, the, the aims or the goals that they would like or that they wanted to achieve. And of course, they are quite typical if we are talking about this kind of organizations, these kind of institutions, except one. And uh, it is the, the first one. Supporting and endeavor determined to improve the productivity of the nation on the basis of free market ideas. And this is, at least from our pro-market, pro-liberty, maybe even libertarian perspective, uh, quite unusual. Uh, so uh, now we have a country that, uh, well, it, it doesn't exist for 123 years and uh, liberal traditions were never very strong in Poland. Uh, actually, they are still not very strong, uh, but we tried to change it. And uh, now we have a group which was quite uh, influential back in Second Republic that uh, as a first goal that they want to achieve are using that they will be doing it on the basis of free market ideas. So this is something new and this is something extra. Uh, we can say, at least in my opinion, that probably this group was one of the first uh, internationally uh, regarded uh, pro-market, maybe not a libertarian, but classical liberal uh, think tank. Uh, that, uh, this is something new, so uh, it's before FEE, it's before American Institute of Economic Research, and they were one of the first ones. So this is important from at least my perspective. And by the way, why uh, some guy from Poland with his terrible Slavic harsh accent is now talking about uh, the importance of uh, remembering about some economists from pre-war Poland. Well, at least from the uh, perspective of culture, it is very important to show that they were, or at least that we can have, uh, some kind of heroes that were already doing something that we are doing now. And this is important to remember about Ludwig von Mises, it is important to remember about Friedrich August von Hayek, not only as great economists, because that's, that's obvious, but also uh, as people who, well, they just wanted to achieve something, right? So they were intellectuals. They tried to change the, the way that history will go. And it's easy if you are talking about so great and strong figures like Mises or Hayek, uh, but in Poland we just don't have this tradition. And uh, we need to uh, gather all the scraps of the Polish liberal tradition to propose to nowadays people uh, an idea that uh, being pro marketer is something good not only if you are living in Arizona or Alaska. So this is the, this is the goal. Uh, by the way, what these people are doing, so well, typical stuff, if you are activist in, in, in think tank or in NGO, you, you're probably doing the same. Uh, so reading speeches and meetings, uh, publishing publications and journals, um, maintaining libraries, reading rooms, meetings for, for professionals. Uh, uh, it can be seen that the uh, Economic Society of, in Krakow was a kind of uh, group of economists, entrepreneurs, activists uh, who were um, interested in uh, talking to so-called laymen, but at the same time they were producing papers for the government. Uh, the problem with the second part of their activity is that you can see them as a kind of, well, let's say like that, Cassandra School of Economics. If you know something about mythology, you know what Cassandra was doing, right? So she had the ability to see the future, 
but at the same time she she's been cursed by Apollo because she didn't want to be her, his mistress that nobody believed in what she was saying and the same as with Krakow School of Economics and Economic Society in Krakow so yeah okay that's fine that's great uh, but uh, we just don't believe you so great thank you and uh, unfortunately maybe because of the lack of democracy in Second Republic uh, these guys were producing mostly um, papers that world government was reading, but they were not using it. Right? So it, it, it works like that. And this is the core of the uh, economic society uh, in Krakow, because if we are talking about associations, so we're talking about dozens of people who were active since 1921 till 1949, uh, and it's impossible to talk about all of them, so these are the three most important guys. Uh, this one was the oldest one, was, his name was Adam Krzyżanowski. Uh, he was a professor of economics at Jagiellonian University, and these two guys are his most two important students. So this, uh, this gentleman here, name was Ferdinand Zweig, and if you are interested in social studies, you can know him not as a Polish economist, but, but as a British sociologist. Uh, he was a Jew, and he, uh, he fled from uh, occupied or almost occupied Poland, at the beginning of uh, our September campaign, and uh, he went to uh, United Kingdom and he worked as a social scientist. And this guy is Adam Hegel, he was 100% Austrian, at least from 1928, uh, when he was attending Ludwig von Mises seminar here in Vienna. And uh, to these guys, you can call them, I don't know, maybe post classics or uh, um, people who were inspired by some of the ideas of Krakow's of uh, Austrian School of Economics, but mostly by uh, David Ricardo or Adam Smith, but uh, this gentleman here, Professor Adam Hegel, uh, he was full-time Austrian, let's call it like that, and uh, uh, he was a very influential in Poland back in his times. Right. Now he's rather forgotten. Uh, well, the question is, why then and why in Krakow? I think that the, the answer is, I will start from the answer of why Krakow. Uh, as you know, Poland, uh, had no independency in 19th century, right? So we had no state, but there were Poles as a nation. And uh, our history was divided in, well, actually in three. So some Poles were living in Tsarist Russia, some Poles were living in Germany, and some Poles were uh, the citizens of uh, Austria-Hungary. Uh, and uh, in comparison to other, to, to, to these countries, Austria-Hungary was the most liberal one, the most liberal one. So uh, in Polish universities, in Krakow and Lemberg, which is Lwów in Polish, uh, the, the, the language of lectures was Polish, right? And in Krakow, which is also very important, we had two quite, uh, well, at least in Poland, quite known economists in 19th century who were liberals. One of them was Julian Dunajewski, who was also a minister of treasury of Austria. And second one was Professor Czerkowski, who was an Austrian. Well, he, uh, at least he, he, he personally described himself as an Austrian. And this is why it was Krakow, not an Lemberg. So first thing is general, let's say, liberal tradition of two Polish universities in Austria, in former Austria-Hungary terrain. And second thing is, well, uh, personal achievements and personal fame of two liberal economists from 19th century. So that's the, that's the thing. Well, uh, creation of economic society in Krakow, if you're talking about the time, wasn't nothing special. As you can see, back then we have uh, many uh, 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 quite similar organizations, but none of them were saying that we are, yes, we are strictly from market. So no, so that, that's the difference. And also I gave an example from Austria. Sorry for my German, I totally don't know it. National Economische Gesellschaft in 1918, so it's almost the same time, uh, which shows us that why then, why, uh, why, uh, why in Krakow? And by the way, the scope of the interest, so it changed a bit. But back in the 20s, the main problem for Poland was what to do with three totally different parts of the country and how to create national economy, right? And in the 30s, the general problem was, of course, um, Great Depression. And in Poland, we have, well, as a rather poor country and with rather uh, not, very, um, not very smart politicians who are actually officers of the military, uh, we were unable to, to, to defend, to, to combat the, 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 the crisis. 
and works. So what these guys were doing, 105 publications from papers to books, uh, radio, uh, magazines and newspapers appearance, and the society was also realizing its aim of presenting the, to the government with opinions on its policies and providing solutions to prevailing problems. As you know, this is the problem of Cassandra School of Economics. And these are some of the uh, examples what these guys were doing. So here is the, the small booklet of Adam Hegel. Uh, the title is uh, Economical Borders of Liberalism and Etatism. And maybe you can see it. Uh, he starts with a quotation from Ludwig von Mises, Liberalism. Uh, so yes, these guys were really inspired by uh, Austrian School of Economics. This is a bit different book, but it's been Polish, so maybe it's not so, it, it, it's not so useful for you. Uh, and the, 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 almost the last thing, economic society in Krakow and the reception of Austrian School of Economics. So because of the weaker institutionalization uh, of economics in Poland, uh, well, uh, it, it doesn't work very well. Uh, most of the debate of Polish pre-war economists were done in newspapers. There were some journals, but not very professional. And uh, <coughs> the number of our universities were, wasn't very significant. And uh, Adam Hegel, after his return from, um, from Vienna, where he was studying for a few months, uh, he showed how small Polish economy debate is by comparing how many books you have in library of University of Vienna and how not too many books we had in, in, in library of uh, Jagiellonian University, because I'm talking about books on economics. And the last thing, Please try to, to reach this book, The Viennese Students of Civilization by Erwin Decker. And what he's saying that uh, Austrian School of Economics was not only a group of uh, scholars interested in economics. They were also interested in something that we can call, with a very big words, maintaining Western civilization, right? So they were not only interested in economics, they were interested in whole human studies. And he, of course, giving an example, I won't be making an introduction to the whole book, just, just, just try to, to find it. Uh, but I think that uh, after may maybe, I don't know, realizing two or three big uh, scientific projects, we would be able in Poland to show Krakow School of Economics also as that kind of group. So they were not only interested in economics, but also in maintaining the Western civilization. And maybe the main point for that would be uh, that we are talking about Krakow School of Economics, right? A school of economics. But there were no common methodology among three of these guys. What was common for them was imponderabilia. So they believed in liberal, general liberal agenda, right? So this is something that shows that, yes, I think that we can say, at least this is my hypothesis for now, that these guys were also kind of students of civilization. Oh, and this is, uh, that, that was the last, uh, the, the last part of my short speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay. There are questions, yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I thought that I'm totally run of time, sorry. <laughs> uh, would anyone within this group ever have referred to Karl Menger, who was born close to Krakow, I know research and spent time in Krakow, or was it mainly focused on the Polish language and thus he wouldn't have ever been, been related to? Yes, so the reception of uh, Karl Menger ideas was significant for all three of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, or may, maybe at least not that reception, but at least knowledge that uh, that kind of economist ever existed. The fact is that Ludwig von Mises was important probably only to uh, Adam Hegel, uh, because uh, if you will find any publications about Austrian School of Economics from pre-war Poland, most of the people skipped Mises, with some exceptions, of course, uh, uh, like, I don't know, uh, Oskar Lange, let's say. Uh, but most of them uh, wasn't very interested in so-called, back then, new Austrians, like Hayek or Mises. But yes, there were many, many, uh, uh, at least quotations from Karl Menger back in these, uh, these guys. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, I know that there was an overlap at the university even, but uh, I'm not sure if they ever like would relate to him as someone being close to Krakow, if in any sense related, uh, or if it, that doesn't really figure at the time that you look just at the language community and never at the birthplaces. So, because then you could even call it as a Polish school of economics with Lebeck being in Galicia yes. and, and so on. So. Okay. 
Uh, Do they ever have claimed a kind of pride? No. Uh, At least I never find it. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But maybe there are some bigger experts on the topic. I, I'm, I'm not an expert on this topic, I'm just more like a, uh, uh, a person who would like to popularize the, the topic. Uh, but as, as, as long as I was studying uh, the journals and books, I've never found anything like that, that we are proud that Karl Menger made his PhD at Jagiellonian University. I've never found anything like that. Yeah. Do you know if Hayden lectured at the Mrs. Kreis? Or, or was he a regular attendant? Uh, uh, he was here in Vienna for around three months' uh, stay, uh, thanks to a grant from Jagiellonian University. And uh, he was attending Ludwig von Mises seminars and I know that he wrote one uh, one paper to some of Austrian journal, but I can't remember the, the title of the journal. I know I know that Professor Hans Jörg Klausinger knows that, mm -hmm. but probably he knows almost everything about this part of uh, of the topic. So yes, Professor Klausinger will will, will know more about this. And of course, this uh, this this paper is in German, right? So uh, by the way, Heidel ancestors were from Germany. He felt himself as a Pole. Uh, but he was totally fluent in German, so that wasn't very tough to him to write it. Thank you.